Hello everyone, Robert here and this is going to be a video around making a character in Cyberpunk Red, which I'm going to be calling Red for the most part, because it's easier, it's shorter. The purpose of this video isn't to sit here and put you through every single step in extreme detail. What I am aiming to do here is to help you navigate character creation, give you a little rundown on each section, and also give you some heads ups about what to expect. Saying that, I'm going to be taking you through this as if you're at my own table, meaning I do things my own little way to make sure my players have a bit more wiggle room. Don't force your GMs to follow my rules. I don't want that, so respect what they want to do. Don't try to say this guy in a video told me to do it. This video is going to be split up into sections, as I expect a lot of pausing and taking your time to do things on your end. Timestamps are also in the description, but they're also right here. There are a few things I will cover first too, so you at least have the proper expectations of what's coming up. I'm going to be using the physical book page numbers here, so if you're using the PDF, all you got to do is add 1 to the page number I say. For example, if I say go check page 40, you'll go to page 41 in the PDF if you're following along using it. So, some quick tips. First thing to keep in mind, while there are roles, Red is mostly a classless game. I come from D&D as my first tabletop game, and this did take some getting used to for me. You're kind of stuck in place at what you could really be. In Red, you have a lot more freedom. So, going into creation, remember your role is not something that will restrict you from learning other skills. Another thing I want to touch on is healing and medical related things in Red. Healing in this game leans into the realistic side of things, meaning if you're a med tech, you're not going into combat flinging spells and healing people instantly like a cleric or a priest in other games. Beyond a trip to the hospital and allowing time for natural healing, you do though have speed heal, but a character can only get that benefit from a med tech who has a dose and it will only work once a day. So keep that in mind. Combat is indeed dangerous like that. Armor, cover, and common sense you'll need all three to survive. I'm going to let you know now that if you intend to be a netrunner, you do need to do your own homework. Really look into the section on netrunning so you don't wind up getting yourself killed in your first combat encounter. Your GM can only do so much for you. You'll also be making your characters stronger by the use of what's called improvement points. This is how you level up, which you get by fulfilling certain things defined by really what kind of player you are. These only increase skills and abilities, and they do not increase stats. Stats can only be changed with the help of cyberware and drugs, so what your stats are starting out will be really what you have to work with. Again, increasing stats with improvement points is not possible, not even HP. Those are just some little things I want to get out there in the open because they're from experiences of my own players when they're coming into the game brand new. So, to get this going, you're going to need to be aware that there are three types of character creation in Red. There's Street Rat, which is a quick way to make a character thanks to multiple templates laid out for you. There are spots where you do get extra templates to pick from, so if you don't want to just pick up a pre-made, this is the way to go. Then there's the Edge Runner, which is a good medium ground, and I'll say it, it is my preferred way. Edge Runner lets you basically take the Street Rat setup and then throw in either some random dice rolls or point buying spots. This is the one I always point people to if they're coming from another tabletop game. Then you have the complete package, which is indeed the complete creation of your character from the ground up. There is nothing you don't pick doing this method. It'll take a while, I always joke about that, but if you really want your character to be your character, you can go this route. You can see the way all of these go down on page 40, which is the page you need to go to right now and put a bookmark. That's the first of three pages covering the methods but it also is a flow chart for both Street Rat and Edge Runner on one and the complete package on the next. You will thank me later. Bookmark this spot or have an extra window open to it. You'll be flipping back and forth a lot and making a character in red. So having this one anchor spot will make it much easier on you. Plus a quick reference, you can't go wrong with it. Now to note too on how I do creation, I do a blend of both Street Rat and Edge Runner depending on my player's needs. Some GMs may lock you in depending on what you select at the start. Like if you say, I want to do a street rat run, they're going to basically say, okay, you can only take street rat choices. So to get this going, flip over to the role section, which is page 29. Remember what I said, roles are not classes. Red is a classless system. What roles do in red are they give you access to what's called role abilities. These are essentially what defines the role and in turn defines you as a character. 
some of these role abilities actually have sub-abilities to them, allowing for further choice. A good example is Solo, which in its role ability combat awareness, they are able to decide what abilities they wish to tap into at the start of combat. This goes into upping their damage deflection, pushing their initiative up higher, or deal more damage. Then you got Medtech, which in a similar vibe has sub-abilities, but they're like mini point buy skills that only a Medtech can use. You can put them into things like surgery or running cryo systems. Now, remember, healing in red is not like it is in other RPGs like D&D. But having a med tech that can shove you into a cryo pump bag and put you in stasis is what'll be the difference between a dead character or a living one. Now, no matter what role you pick, your first role will always start with four points in their role ability. So, once you have picked the role, go and peek at page 143. Technically, 142 is where the section starts, but from 143, you can see where to go for your role. And no, I am not going to go into multiclassing in this video. If your role ability lines up with what you want your general vibe to be, you're set. That's what you're going to shoot for, and you've picked your role. In character creation, from here on out, that role choice is going to decide a few things for you in the rest of this. You'll see when we get down to skills and your gear. But for choosing a role, spend a lot of time with the role ability section to be sure that yes, this is the flavor I want to bring to the table. Now, let's figure out what your flavor actually is, as we're going to be going into the life paths now. This section is one of the ones my players have the most fun doing, but I also have a lot of players who lean heavily into role playing and making voices for their characters. They really get into it, and I love it. And they love world building just as much as I do, so this is gold for them. You can find Life Paths on page 43. Life Path is a section dedicated to helping you flesh your character out. It'll do this with charts. Lots of charts. Tons of charts and uh, dice rolls. Now, I will always say this. Just because this section exists doesn't mean you must follow it as the only options for Life Path choices. Each of these charts can be rolled on or just straight picked from. If you don't like any of the choices, work with your GM to work out an answer that fits you. This will help you really fill in holes in not only your story, but also the rest of what the GM can pull from to keep that game tailored to your taste. This isn't just generic paths either. Starting on page 53, you will find the role-based life paths. This is where your selected role starts coming into play, and you get even more choices to branch out to. This section I didn't want to go too deep into here, because I know it's going to be one that people go deep into on their own. Have some fun with this. And don't be afraid to let the dice decide for you either. Alright, stat time! The start of stats themselves is on page 71, which will include the descriptions of all the stats and what they'll do. Now, here is where I urge players to definitely go the edge runner route. Here in stats, you'll get some charts. As a street rat, you'll roll 1d10 and that selects a whole row of stats for you, and you just pop those in. Quick and done. Edge runners, though? you will roll 1d10 for each stat and take the stat in the selected box. Every single roll has their own chart here, so there is some good variety and the main stats you want to keep an eye on will be body, will, and empathy. The reason for this is your body and will are what makes up your HP. You know, very important stat here. And to get it, you add the two together, then divide that by two so you get the average, multiply that by five, then add an additional 10. Or you can just look at this chart here or look below in the book and check to see what your HP will be off the two numbers. It's good to know the formula on the fly, but really the chart will do just fine and is quicker for people who have the resources on hand. Mark your HP's halfway point rounded up as your seriously wounded threshold, and also mark down your death save which is equal to your body stat. When you're seriously wounded, you're rolling with negatives to each skill check. You avoid this by obviously not getting hurt. Empathy's easier. It is what determines your humanity. Humanity is just empathy multiplied by 10. So if you got 6 empathy, you're at 60 humanity. Humanity keeps you from going off the deep end and winding up a cyber psycho and just, you know, another corpse in a gutter. So now we're getting into skills. And this is where I'm about to start a bit of a tradition for the rest of this video. Skills begin on page 81, but I'm going to tell you now. Go ahead and turn to page 86. You'll find all the templates and choices right there. This will show you what you're getting for your role. So when you flip back up to page 81, 
you can check what the skills actually do from the template that you're getting. Street Rat gets the ranks pre-assigned. Edge Runner is a hybrid point buy between Street Rat and Complete Package, but you're locked into those skills provided. It's at this point I usually lay out a choice for my players. They can, if they want, go with the Street Rat. Or they can choose Street Rat as a guide on Complete Package Point Buy by reducing a skill to one and adding it to another, and repeat this as needed until they're content with their setup. I did use this before with Edge Runner, and people just liked the fact that they could pick their own skills more freely and not be stuck with the chart. How Edge Runner really works for those curious is you get a pool of 86 points, and then you distribute those to the skills listed on the chart below. Now, pointing it out, the reason it's 86 is because those first bold skills you see all must be level 2. And there is no exception to that. And no skill starting out can be higher than level 6. There are some skills that do cost double, you know, 2 points instead of 1, but for good reason. A quick glance at some of these, like martial arts, will explain all you need to know why. Once you get skills squared away, it's time to start getting into what you're packing. Weapons and Armor Time and remember what we did last section? Yeah, this is going to be just like that. Weapons and Armor begins on 91, but go ahead and flip to page 98. There you'll see the packages that your role will be getting starting out. Now I'm going to say it now. Edge Runners and Street Rats get 500 eddies to spend during creation. Do not spend it until the end of your character creation. You'll thank me later for not sending you down the rabbit hole of the economy in the middle of creation. So, back into it. Go ahead and snag the items that are presented in the packages. Go ahead and jot down what is designated for your role here on your sheet. Once you do that, then head up to page 91 and get familiar with what is what using your package as a guide. Main page you need to look at at this point is page 94. That'll tell you a little bit of what you need to know about what weapon you're packing, damage, and all the other good stuff. By now I'm sure you've noticed that there's a lot of references to further pages, like how alt fire modes are on page 173. but for right now, in this section and what we're doing here, just go ahead and get the essentials. For armor, the main thing you need to remember is SP equals stopping power. You got armor that covers the head and armor that covers the body, and head armor only comes into play during aimed shots. Everything by default is right to the body. If you're shot and that shot deals 9 damage but you're wearing armor with 10 SP, you're fine. If that shot deals 11 damage, you're taking one damage that got through your armor, and the SP of that armor is dropped by one point to nine. So, up next is a section that is just as much practicality as it is flavor and flair. This is your outfit, it's your gear. This is gonna be what you use to get your job done. So, for the outfit section, it kicks off on page 99, but, yep, we're gonna page 103. And this is where you'll see all the packages you get as Street Rat or Edge Runner. You'll see the package you get per each roll as before, so you can easily see what you're getting when you jump in. Go ahead and add them to your sheet, and feel free afterwards to look back and see what each does in the section beforehand, just a glance through. You'll see why later. Really, really though, take a look at what an agent does. It feels overlooked often by my own players on what it's capable of, I feel. This section is also where, if you're a netrunner, you're going to get all of your goodies like your programs, your goggles, your cyberdeck, you name it. You'll see this is also where you'll get some useful stuff like bug detectors, radios, flashlights, air hypos, etc. Also, a question I got asked a few times is, why multiple sets of clothing? You have to not think of the game as other RPGs, both tabletop and video game ones. If your character would wear the exact same clothing every single day in the red, it'd easily get worn out and trashed, and you'd wind up just looking like shit. Remember, style is a big thing in this game. Before we move on to the next section though, read the last bit of the outfits section on page 105. I'm talking about lifestyle and housing. That's a much bigger part of the game than you may expect, and it'll be one of your main drives. This is a very, very small definition of it, but it plays a huge role but you'll find out about it much further on in the book on page 377. Don't flip to that yet, there's going to be a time for it. Save it for when you're in the last section of this video. Just be aware of it for now. So, now we're getting into one of the things cyberpunk in general is known for, cyberware. Now, chrome is how you are able to increase your stats after creation. Yes, there's humanity you have to worry about, but this section calculates your starting cyberware's humanity cost for you. 
So, you got that weight off of your head, but you ready for that page jump? Cyberware starts at page 108, and we're jumping ahead to page 117. There are the roll packages with what cyberware you get and how much humanity you lose. Remember, you'll round down your empathy stat too, so if you had 6 empathy, but after installing your stuff you had 46 humanity, you'll have 4 empathy. But yep, go ahead and pick up what your roll sets up for you here. You can head back up and kind of glance at what each part does for you. Now though, for the most part, your character is hashed out and completed. Now that you've gotten all the main pieces in place, it's time to introduce you to one of the hardest sets of choices you're going to have to make, and it's time to spend your extra cash. I'm not joking, this is going to be something I cannot lay out for you proper, because there's that many choices. In character creation, you have access to every single item in the book to purchase. If you can afford it with your 500 eddies, you can buy it, unless your GM has reasons against it. Remember, they're right now trying to keep game balance in mind. In this part, you need to keep in mind that you as a group of players cannot pull together your starter eddies. Each player individually must buy things for themselves starting out. So ready to see why I kept saying just glance through stuff and get general ideas? Alright, go ahead and turn to page 340, the Night Market Appendix. This section is why I did not make you spend a ton of time on the individual sections about weapons, gear, armor, or cyberware. This is the item section of the book and it answers every single question you may have been building. Here is the costs of everything, the full descriptions of everything, the abilities of everything, and the rarity of everything. You'll find out what attachments can do for weapons, what the different ammunition types can do, which I really recommend looking into for spending some of those starter eddies. They're really good. Grenades, exotic weapons. I, I can go on about this section for hours. Do not overlook the gear section of this, especially agents. You'll find their description on page 352. The cyberware descriptions here are in detail, much better than in the previous section, and installation costs are also covered, at least at my table. Some may charge for it. For Netrunners, you'll get to see in detail what your programs can do in this section on page 368. Yeah, like I said, this is where you're going to be spending a lot of time actually seeing what your stuff does. Remember to check out Lifestyle and Housing on page 377 too, as I mentioned earlier. If you're living on the street, you'll be dealing with penalties and stuff like that, so do what you can to live in your means and don't wind up in the cold. Make those 500 eddies count, or save them for the game. It's all up to you. But yeah, that's effectively what I drag my new players through on their first sit-down, including holding off how much they're going to do in the Night Market Appendix because I don't want to distract them from just taking in the little bits first so they have a foundation of what they're going to want when they get to the big part. I know there are things I left out, but I left them out intentionally, like if you're running out of money early on. This video is just to get people through the layout of the book and through character creation quick and smooth. I believe that people should have the freedom to explore what they want to explore, so I didn't want to just railroad too hard that this is the only way because it's my way vibe. Also, I don't expect everyone to agree, which I'm actually happy about to be fair. Every single table is different, every table has GMs of different experience levels and views, and that's still the best thing about tabletop games. And I hope my view helped. If only a couple people watch this and come out of this with a character they're confident with, it's a success to me. So I hope you get to have some fun. And to address an elephant in the room, I intentionally did not cover complete package here in this video because I do not believe it is a good choice for new players, even people who are experienced tabletop players coming from other games in Cyberpunk. While you can read everything, watch every video and all that jazz, you never know what kind of game your own GM is going to run and what fire you're going to be walking through. So it's good to go in with a little guidance first before you learn what skills will truly be saving your ass. There is no realistic way I can outline what'll save you in your own GM's game, and I am also not wanting to run their game for them. Remember, your GM has their own say in ways. Don't push my views or my rules on them. Take care everyone, and I hope you find yourselves a good table.